Hello everyone, I'm Rupinder Madhya. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are diving into the essential aspects of mastering IELTS Writing Task 2. As many of you know, this section is not only about writing, it is actually about expressing your thoughts eloquently, logically and persuasively within a limited time frame. Whether you are a student seeking higher education, a professional seeking career opportunities or an English language enthusiast, mastering IELTS Task 2 is very crucial. In this video, we'll explore the key strategies, common pitfalls and effective techniques to tackle this challenge head-on. By the end of this session, you will have a solid understanding of what it takes to craft a compelling and well-structured IELTS essay. So let's get started and pave the way towards your IELTS success. IELTS Writing Task 2 Before going towards writing the essay, we must uh, understand what is the expectation of the examiner. What is the examiner looking for? How should I write my essay so that it, um, like uh, the examiner gets impressed by my essay, I am fulfilling all the requirements which are needed. Task 1 and 2 are judged on the basis of these four parameters like task response, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy. We'll explore all these uh, four parameters in detail. So what is task response? So here uh, the examiner expects that the candidate sufficiently addresses all parts of the task. So like whatever is asked in the question, you are addressing every part. You are explaining every part of the question. The candidate presents a well-developed response to the question with relevant, extended and supported ideas. It means that while attempting the essay, you are explaining the topic sentence well. You are giving relevant examples to support your ideas. Let move, let's move to coherence and uh, cohesion. So coherence and cohesion means clarity and precision. You are clear about your ideas and you are precise. You are writing to the point. You are not giving any unnecessary uh, information in your essay. So the candidate sequences all information and ideas logically, manages all aspects of cohesion well. All aspects of cohesion well means there is no story kind of a thing. You are to the point. You have written a relevant topic sentence, relevant example to justify your point. And it's not like very big paragraphs unnecessarily. You're writing to the point. You're using the paragraphing sufficiently and appropriately. It means that if the question requires you to write three body paragraphs, then you have written three body paragraphs. And if it requires only two body paragraphs, then it you are providing just two paragraphs along with your introduction and conclusion. Let's move to co uh, lexical resources. So what is lexical resource? Lexical resource is all about vocabulary. So the candidate is using wide range of vocabulary fluently, flexibly to convey precise meanings. Means you're not using any artificial vocabulary or unrequired vocabulary. Your vocabulary is as per the need. You are skillfully using uncommon lexical um, items. There may be errors or inaccuracies in word choice, but overall, it's a good use of lexical items. There are rare spelling or word formation errors. I would suggest that avoid the spelling errors absolutely while attempting your uh, writing task of IELTS. Then grammatical range and accuracy. How much is your grammatical range? Are you only writing simple sentences or you are using compound and complex uh, sentences also? And it's very important to use complex sentences in um, IELTS writing task. So here the examiner looks for a wide range of structures, passive voice, conditionals if required, question forms and complex sentence of course. So it should, uh, should not be just simple sentences. It should be some combination of uh, compound and complex sentences also. 
majority of sentences are error free there are no grammatical error in that the tense is used correctly makes only very occasional errors or inappropriate uh, inappropriacies so examiner is well aware of this fact that you may uh, make a few mistakes but then they should be very uh, like rare errors in your writing task now i am going to explain that um, like for different question types how many parts should be there and what kind of opinion is required most of the times uh, students get confused with this thing that how many paragraphs should be written how i need to divide my essay so let's explore this thing also so to what extent do you agree or disagree with the statement so if this kind of essay comes this is one part question one part question means firstly what kind of opinion is required that yes agree or disagree whether you agree to the statement or you disagree to the statement or decide why you agree or disagree equally so if you say that i uh, agree as well as disagree then equally you need to decide on the points that why you agree with this thing and why you disagree with this thing let's move to discuss both views and give your own opinion this is a three part question discuss both views as stated yes you are presenting your opinion it may be one of the views or a combination of both so you need to here in this uh, type of question you need to discuss both the views which are given in the question your points in favor or against those views and then your own opinion into it why is this so give reason for this and solution so this is a third three part uh, question a position is presented on why this is so so one position has to be stated there why this is so the reason for this issue and solution to solve the issue we'll discuss in detail the paragraphing also in the next slide do the disadvantages of international tourism outweigh the advantages so this is two part question yes you must clearly say if there are more advantages or more disadvantages why is this so what effect does it have on the individual and society three part question yes you must give reason for the statement why this is so then present the effect it has on one part means on the individual and on the society to understand this better let's move to the next part so this is easy to understand so what extent do you agree or disagree with the statements so four to five paragraphs can be there um, please keep in mind these four to five paragraphs include your introduction and conclusion also so how the paragraphing has to be in this question to what extent do you agree or disagree with the statement the introduction can be there means which must be there of course reason why i agree or disagree another reason why i agree or disagree concession paragraph reason why i don't agree or disagree and then the conclusion discuss both views and give your own opinion how many paragraphs are required five paragraphs introduction one view other view your opinion and conclusion see in this part to what extent do you agree or disagree it's your wish whether you want to explain it in uh, four paragraphs or five means you can um, club these two point number 2 reason why i agree disagree another reason it can be written in one paragraph also okay then why is this so give reason for this and solution five paragraphs introduction reason why it is so reason for this solution for this and then the conclusion do the disadvantages of international tourism outweigh the advantages 
many time we get this kind of uh, question do the disadvantages outweigh advantages or advantages dis outweigh disadvantages so here four paragraphs are required introduction so if you are going towards uh, more advantages you have to mention uh, here also advantages so if you think that there are more advantages then three advantages and two disadvantages and vice versa and then conclusion why is this so what effect does it have on the individual and society so five paragraphs are required here introduction then one paragraph explaining why this is so then effect on the individual effect on society and then conclusion Here are some do's and don'ts also, which you must uh, take care of while attempting your IELTS writing task. Make sure your ideas are directly related to the question. Don't uh, add on any points which are not directly related, because that would be um, like not good for scoring a good band score. Use ideas and examples that you are familiar with. Don't uh, like try to put anything that you are not aware of, and that relate directly to the topic. Extend your answer to include a number of ideas that will support the question. Don't include irrelevant information. Don't try to over generalize that everybody uh, does this or. Uh, all the individuals do this or something don't over generalize don't produce a memorized essay don't present recent research or stats related to the topic at least 41% of the men believe this thing most of their IELTS students they uh, involve themselves uh, in this practice that they present the percentages but avoid them all the points which are explained in this video they are not my like personal opinion on how to write an IELTS essay but these are taken from the instructions given by IDP itself let's explore a sample answer so the question here is some people believe that the use of artificial intelligence in the classroom will be beneficial for students while others think that it will have negative consequences. Discuss both views and give your own opinion. So the question is about use of artificial intelligence in the classrooms. Introduction requires a general statement and then rephrasing of uh, the question which is asked and then thesis statement giving your own opinion. Okay. So in this uh, question, the introduction that the student has written is in recent years, the integration of artificial intelligence into classrooms has been a topic of intense debate. Proponents argue that AI can uh, significantly enhance the learning experience for students, while opponents express concerns about potential drawbacks. This essay will explore both perspectives and provide a balanced view. This is one way of uh, uh, giving your own opinion, this kind of a statement that both the perspectives will be uh, discussed and uh, it will provide a balanced view. You can give your own opinion in some other way also that I believe um, that artificial intelligence uh, is the need of the hour. It should be used in the classrooms. So that will also be a good way of putting your own um, like thought onto the paper. Let's move to the body paragraph one. So the candidate has to discuss both the views and give their own opinion. So let us see uh, what is uh, the first view given over here. Supporters of AI in education contend that it offers several advantages. Firstly, AI technologies can personalize learning experiences, catering to the diverse needs and learning paces of individual students. Through algorithms and data analysis, AI can identify areas where students struggle and provide tailored exercises or explanations, thereby improving comprehension and retention. 
secondly i can facilitate interactive learning offering simulations and virtual reality experiences that make complex topics more engaging and understandable for instance virtual labs powered by ai can enable students to conduct experiments in a risk free environment this hands on approach enhances practical knowledge and problem solving skills this is a very good paragraph though i would say that um, the topic sentence could have been like better this one instead of simply writing that it offers several advantages uh, the candidate could have written several advantages like personalized learning experience and interactive learning with the help of simulations then start with your explanation okay so uh, certain uh, good vocabulary words are used over here like catering to the diverse needs uh, learning paces of individual students through algorithm and data analysis uh, where students pro, uh, struggle and provide tailored exercises thereby improving comprehension and retention retention is also a good word this facilitates interactive learning offering simulations virtual realities and experiences make complex topics more engaging understandable then a good example is given that for instance virtual labs powered by ai can enable students to conduct experiments in a risk free environment this hands on approach enhances practical knowledge and problem solving skills this is a very good example let's move ahead body paragraph 2 now the other opinion however critics raise valid concerns about the negative impact of ai in the classroom one major worry is the potential loss of human interaction good potential loss of human interaction traditional teaching methods emphasize the importance of face to face interaction between students and teachers fostering communication fostering communication skills emotional intelligence over reliance on ai might lead to generation of students lacking essential social skills this is also good over reliance on ai might lead to generation of students lacking essential social skills additionally there are apprehensions about data privacy and security ai systems collect vast amounts of data to personalize learning raising ethical questions about how this data is stored shared and protected mishandling of this data could have serious consequences of students privacy this is very good actually this whole paragraph shows that uh, the candidate is well aware of the like whole topic um like uh, this can be like really a good thing if uh, you get a kind of topic in the exam where you are aware of all the facts and figures related to that thing so all these things um, as this candidate has mentioned over here that um, ai systems collect vast amount of data to personalize learning raising ethical questions about how this data is stored shared protected mishandling of this data could have serious consequences on their privacy then even this point that uh, over reliance on ai might lead to generation of students lacking essential social skills additionally there are apprehensions about data privacy and security like this is a good way of putting your thoughts now uh, the question also wants the candidate to put their own opinion so so the candidate here has added body paragraph 3 in my opinion while ai undoubtedly offers promising possibilities in education a balanced approach is crucial incorporating ai is a supplementary tool rather than a replacement for human teachers can harness its benefits while preserving the invaluable human touch in education very good proper regulations and ethical guidelines must be established to ensure data privacy and responsible use of ai in the classroom Moreover continuous teacher training should be provided to effectively integrate AI technologies into the curriculum enhancing their teaching methods uh, rather than diminishing them This is a good uh, paragraph If we see over here the opinion is a balanced approach is needed 
and then uh, the candidate says that it can be a supplementary tool rather than replacement for human teachers benefits while preserving the invaluable human touch in education this is also a very good line that it can harness its benefit while preserving the invaluable human touch in education proper regulation and ethical guidelines must be established to ensure data privacy and responsible use and then this is also a good point that continuous continuous teacher training uh, could be provided to effectively integrate ai technologies into the curriculum good so the opinion of the person of the candidate is also well put in uh, by this candidate and the conclusion in conclusion the integration of ai in classrooms presents both opportunities and challenges striking a balance between technological advancement and the preservation of essential human qualities is key to ensuring a positive impact on students learning experiences so see in this uh, the candidate has not come up with any new point in the conclusion whatever uh, is being uh, discussed in body paragraph 1 2 and 3 the same has been concluded this is a very good way of putting the answer so this was all about uh, writing task 2 if you need more help in this uh, uh, context that how to write a good essay or you want your essay to be um, like checked by us you want our feedback you can always contact us you can send your essay on our email visionupgraded@gmail.com or even you can contact us thank you so much